Hey everyone, welcome to another sideboard tech video. Alright, today we're going to be covering Gruel, that's red, green, and modern. This is a sideboard tech video, it's number four in this series where I go through your sideboard options when you are playing a certain uh, combination of colors, in this case, modern. I started off with Teamer, then I went on to Simic, and then Izzet, and now we're finishing off this color, or this part of the color pie with gruel and after this i'm moving on to sultai so I'm moving on to black uh you know color combinations that are using black and then we'll go on from there on to white until i cover essentially everything that's at least commonly played in modern so today we're going to be going through gruel as usual i'm going to be going through the disclaimer first just so we're all on the same page this will include every possible sideboard card option in gruel in modern there are 10,000 legal cards in this format Inevitably, for every card that I discuss in this video, you will find another, or maybe 10 others. I'm going to be going through the cards that are most commonly used right now in the meta uh, that we're playing in, or some cards that I have historically enjoyed playing that don't necessarily see play elsewhere, but I play them when I can. The focus is going to be on cards most seen in the sideboard, so what that means is that if there's a card that sees sideboard play and mainboard play, but mostly mainboard play, you're probably not going to cover it in this type of video. I'm really looking at cards that are really sideboard specific, tools you, you use to kind of sculpt your sideboards and bring them in when you are playing certain types of matchups. So that's really it. So, you know, Scavenging Ooze sees more mainboard play than sideboard play, so it won't necessarily be in a video like this. The sections are based on the color combination in question. What that means is when you're playing a Gruel deck, you're playing something that's probably a lot more aggressive, uh, maybe a bit more disruptive to lands. Uh, you know, you're not playing a control deck, that's almost certain. So the combine, the sideboard options that I'm that I'm discussing and the ones that I'm showing uh, to you are ones that uh, I would pick in a Gruel setting. And when you're playing a normal type of deck, I generally tend to shy away from discussing sideboard options for combo decks. Because combo decks, generally speaking, are degenerate, and I don't necessarily say that in a negative way, but combo decks are trying to do something that are not necessarily normal in Magic, so the sideboard options for combo decks are ten tend to skew away from what you normally would play, uh, you know, in a, in a non-combo deck, so just keep that in mind. And of course, last but not least, I love hearing from you on what I missed. Uh, you know, I've actually discovered some cards from, from all of you, uh, as you make comments on my previous sideboard tech videos uh, that I didn't even know existed or I didn't even know saw play and you know I really enjoyed that aspect of these videos so again with this video please anything that I missed or you think I missed a mark on please let me know in the, in the comment section down below so let's get started with land hate all right well you're playing the right color when you're talking land hate uh, in modern red is essentially the best color you can use to destroy your opponent's lands. I mean, just look at the look at the options on the screen here. When you think about land destruction, or even land disruption, both essentially being the same thing, these are the cards you're really thinking of, and they're all here. Red has it, so when you're playing Gruul, you're pretty much set if you're worried about lands that your opponents are playing. Let's start off with Alpine Moon, a very surgical version of Blood Moon. That's essentially how I like to describe Alpine Moon. As opposed to Blood Moon that just kind of blanket destroys, or not destroys, but disrupts all lands. Um, Alpine Moon essentially targets one specific land and may causes it to lose all of its abilities and, you know, produce uh, one of any color, as opposed to Blood Moon, where it just makes it into a mountain. So there's slightly more upside for your opponent than if you were just playing a straight up Blood Moon card. But you get to turn off, Urza's is mine, and then you shut down, you shut down Tron. You get to turn off Valakut, and then you shut down the land, uh, the land deck. So Alpine Moon is really a card you bring in when your mana base is a bit too greedy. Now, Gruul doesn't necessarily have a greedy mana base. Uh, Ponza, obviously, is famously red-green, and they play Blood Moons or Blood Moon-like effects in the main board, like Magus of the Moon. So, I mean... I don't think you're really going to need to lean on Alpine Moon too much if you're worried about land disruption. I would just go straight to Blood Moon in a Gruel deck. But Alpine Moon is still an option if for whatever reason you are not running that many basics in your deck and you need something that's going to affect your opponent more than it's going to affect you. Cleansing Wildfire. I like this card. I'm still trying it out. I'm giving it a chance. I'm not 100% sold on it yet, but I do like the fact that it's 
allowing you to destroy land uh, your opponent controls. They're going to replace it with a basic if they've got one. And you're going to get to draw a card. That's a nice little play there. Any card that allows you to do something as destructive as destroying a land and drawing a card at the same time, I'm a fan of. It's a sorcery. It fills up your graveyard if you're playing that kind of a deck. In Gruul, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you might be playing Tarmogoyf and you, you, know, you might need some sorcerers in your graveyard, but that's not really why you would play Cleansing Wildfire. The ability to destroy a particular land and then draw a card is really why you would uh, pick Cleansing Wildfire. So it really depends on the type of deck you're playing. If you want to be able to draw as many cards as you can, then Cleansing Wildfire would probably be a good option. Blood Moon? Well, what can I say? It's Blood Moon. I love Blood Moon. You slam it down, and essentially your opponent's GG. I mean, that's not always true. I've definitely lost games with Blood Moon on the battlefield. Uh, the, you know, Blood Moon under my control, I should say. But generally speaking, once you land Blood Moon, assuming that you fixed your lands beforehand, your opponent's not really going to find a way out. It's very, very difficult, especially in game one if you're playing Blood Moon in the main. But we're talking about sideboard here, so let's just assume you're not. If you're not playing it in the main, you're playing in the sideboard, well then Blood Moon's going to be a tough card to work around. And you're playing Gruul, you're only playing two colors, so you're going to be able to get, you're going to be Blood Moon proof essentially by turn two, which is always nice. And then you slam it down turn three and you're essentially good to go. It's, it's really nice to be able to play Blood Moon in a one or two color deck. Molten Rain. Well, you get to destroy land and you get to deal damage to your opponent. So I would see Molten Rain coming in more in a, in a burn style deck. Uh, so not really necessarily gruel, but if you do want to you if you do want to deal as much damage to your opponent as possible and you're not too worried about the long game, you're only really worried about the short game maybe because you're very explosive, then Molten Rain might be a better option than Blood Moon here because you're getting to destroy land, which means you might turn off your Tron opponent for a turn or two and you're dealing two damage, which might, you know, be very important in your case. So if you're playing a super aggressive deck and you're not really worried about the mid to late game, then Blood Moon, you know, wouldn't be as good of a pick. Molten Rain would be a lot more aggressive. It, it would suit your aggressive style. Uh, you know, dealing two damage is, is definitely something. You're shocking your opponent. So go for it. Go for Molten Rain in those type of scenarios. Last but not least, I, I've, I've included Crumble to Dust and, all, you know, in the Is It and the Teamer version of Sideboard Tech videos. It's an option. It's kind of like a nuke for one particular land. If you're exiling, you know, an Urza's Mine, you're removing all the Urza's Mines from the game. And, you know, it effectively shuts down Tron or Valakut or essentially any land you're trying to get rid of. I feel like, although it, sees some, it does still see some fringe play in the current meta, believe it or not, I've seen it. I don't think it's really your, your main card. The Void is kind of inconsequential here, you're not really worried about your red cards, your red spells being countered any more than any other spell. So, yeah, again, if you if you really want to hate on one specific land card, if that's really all you're worried about, Crumble to Dust might make sense. It is 4 mana, so you better be ramping into it, because you definitely don't want to be spending all of your turn 4 on this, that wouldn't feel that good. This on turn 3 might be pretty good, if you give, to get it on turn 2 even better but you know, i think that's kind of like christmas fairyland there but again it, it's an option it's it's on the higher end of the curve i think the previous four cards are, are probably going to be better in most scenarios artifact and enchantment hate well red green has it all <laughs> at, at least in the shard that we're talking about here or whatever this is part of the color pie when we're talking about teamer colors and the sub sub parts of teamer gruel has it all right so if you're playing you know is it you're losing out on green. If you're playing Simic, you're losing out on red. Here you have green and red. You have all the hate you need. Let's go with starting with natural state. I'm not a fan of natural state, and I've said that in the previous sideboard tech videos. Really because of the the limitation on, on the uh, the three mana costs. Uh, three mana costs or less. So the artifacts or the enchantments that you're destroying need to be three CMC or less, or this is not gonna work. So natural state is gonna be is gonna be awesome. In specific metas, if you if you don't expect to you know if you don't expect to be destroying artifacts and enchantments that are four CMC or more, natural state is going to essentially beat every card that you see here that's coming after it. Natural state is number one because it's going to be the most mana efficient. It's instant and it covers your art artifacts and enchantments at the same time. So natural state in certain metas, if depending on what you're expecting to play, is either going to be the best card in this in this set that you see in front of you or probably one of the more worse ones so it really again it really depends at one point natural state was really awesome right now again it really depends i think natural state actually might be pretty good depending on how the artifact decks in the current modern meta kind of pan out 
It's kind of a wait and see. But if you're unsure, if you need something that's a bit more all-encompassing, you can move on to Ancient Grudge, at least for artifacts. So Ancient Grudge, pretty awesome here because it's essentially a two-for-one, although it's spread across four mana, uh, three mana, I should say. So you cast it for one red and a colorless, at instant speed, you destroy an artifact, and then from your graveyard for one green at any given time that you can cast an instant, boom, you got flashback. So, you know... Very, very powerful here. For three mana, you're destroying two artifacts. And if you're playing artifact heavy meta, this Ancient Grudge is an oldie but a goodie. Not many cards are better than Ancient Grudge in this instance. So if you're playing red green, this is something you might really want to consider, especially if you're not too worried about enchantments. Then that's even better. Ancient Grudge becomes even a better option for you. Destructive Rivalry, again, kind of like Molten Rain, if you are playing a very aggressive style deck if you want to beat your opponent down as quickly as possible you're not really worried about the mid to late game maybe you're weak in the mid to late game then destructive revelry is going to be your better option because you're able to destroy an artifact or enchantment uh, for one red one green which is going to be easy for you and you're going to be dealing two damage to that permanence controller so essentially your opponent and again just like in molten rain you're shocking your opponent that's going to be important and that two damage might you know be the difference between winning the game a turn early or not so destructive revelry might be a better option in those scenarios. Cinder Vines. I just think Cinder Vines is hilarious if you're playing Storm. If, you, if you're playing a lot of Storm, play Cinder Vines because it's essentially going to be GG if they can't get rid of it. Uh, basically for its first ability. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, Cinder Vines deals one damage to that player. So yeah, yeah, go ahead and stack up your Storm counters. You're going to be dead before you get to resolve them. So that's, you know, but that's, that's kind of a side thing. Uh, so you cast it for one red, one green, and then for a third mana, so one CMC more, you have to sacrifice it. You get to destroy target artifact or enchantment. And again, like Destructive Revelry, it deals two damage to your opponent. So it really depends on what you're playing here. If you think you're going to have enough mana, which you're red-green, you probably do. Then Cinder Vines might be a better option, especially if you are worried about combo decks that are going to be stacking up a lot of spells in the turn. Cinder Vines might be your better option here, because then all of a sudden you might shut those decks down, you know, without even having to sacrifice it. And in instances where you do need to destroy an artifact or enchantment, well, you have that option, but it's a bit more expensive. There's a premium for that ability. It's going to be coming down to what you're worried about playing against. Wilt. Wilt is a bit more is a bit, bit more newer. Oh boy, that's not good English grammar. Well, Wilt is the newer kid on the block, and that's better. And it came out on Ikoria, destroyed target artifact or enchantment, and has a cycling ability of two. So, at the face of it, it's essentially like natural state without the limitation. It's essentially like Destructive Revelry, but without the two damage, but it's also one green, one colorless, so you don't necessarily need red, but let's be honest, you're playing Gruul. And you get to cycle it, and that's what I really like about Wilt. So, there have been a lot of times where I've played games where I bring in Artifact or Enchantment Hate, and sometimes I draw too much of it, and then I'm stuck with, you know, Artifact or Enchantment removal in my hand for an entire game, and it's just kind of a dead card, and you know, it doesn't feel good. Wilt... It shines in those scenarios because you get to cycle it away when you don't need it. Or sometimes you miss side, like you misread what deck you're playing against. So you bring an artifact or enchantment hit and you realize, oh, you don't really need it. Well, in those instances, instead of having a dead card for the rest of the game, you can cycle it away. And Wilt really is powerful in that case. So this is going to be coming down more to taste or what you really need. If you just need unconditional artifact and enchantment removal, and you don't really need anything else special with it, then Wilt is probably your best option here because of that cycling ability. That cycling ability, believe it or not, is pretty powerful. So keep that in mind if you're, if you're considering artifact and enchantment removal. A Braid is my current go-to in terms of artifact hate. I'm not too worried about enchantments right now in Modern, so a Braid pretty much makes all of my decks. That ability of being able to target a creature and deal deal three damage to it is really what seals the deal here, obviously. So you could bring it against artifact decks, and you could bring it against aggro decks, or both. And a braid is just it just shines. If you need a bit more creature removal in your deck, well then a braid's there. If you need artifact removal, well a braid's there. So again, very very powerful option. Depend comes down to the type of deck you're playing, your play style, and what you expect to play against. Last but not least, back to nature. Well, believe it or not, it does see play. I'm I'm not too sure why you would need to destroy all enchantments. Uh, you know, I didn't even include Shattering Spree here, where you can destroy a bunch of creatures. Uh, sorry, a bunch of uh, artifacts of replicate. And there's another uh, card that I'm blanking on right now that just destroys all artifacts. But this, believe it or not, I mean, this card does see some play in some modern decks right now, so I had to include it and talk about it. 
Back to nature, destroy all enchantments for two mana at instant speed. All right, well, if that's what you need, this is going to be an awesome card, and you're going to destroy your enchantments opponent. Although, again, you don't see too much of that in modern. Graveyard Hate. I'm really getting tired of showing this screen. This is the fourth screen. The fourth time I've showed this screen, and, uh, yeah, I think the... Yeah, it's just essentially always the same thing. The only thing you don't have here is Ashiok Dream Render, which was in all the other uh, sideboard tech videos because they had access to blue. Here you don't. So you have one less card option for Graveyard Hate. Boohoo. It doesn't really matter. Although Ashiok is pretty cool. Um, but realistically speaking, you have all the, artif all the Graveyard Hate that you need in all the other, you know, the other five cards that you see here. So Tormod's Crypt... For zero mana, you sacrifice it and exile all cards from target player's graveyard. It's pretty cool. It's free if you are resource short or, you know, if this is all you really need to be able to target one specific uh, player's graveyard at one time. Format script is going to be pretty awesome for you there. Not necessarily my go-to, but it's an option and it does see some play. Although I do prefer everything else on this screen, honestly, to format script. Surgical Extraction is pretty powerful. It's not graveyard hate in the sense that, you know, you're not going to be clearing out your entire opponent's graveyard. You're not stopping cards from being cast from the graveyard. What you are doing, though, is targeting specific cards in the graveyard and then getting rid of all of the copies from the game. And that's really powerful. So especially when you're playing against combo decks, being able to target their win condition that's now in the graveyard might be a very powerful play. Now, you are playing Gruul, so you're not countering anything, not unless you're playing something weird. So, usually if the win condition's in the graveyard, it's there because your opponent somehow milled himself. Or they cast it and you've lost the game because it's the win condition. So, Surgical Extraction actually might not necessarily be the best card you play in a Gruul deck. I did keep it here because it is an option. And it could come in handy in non-combo decks as well. You know, you might, you know, remove their main creature and then Surgical Extract it to get rid of it from, you know, get rid of all the other copies. That's a, that's a play. I just don't see it being as strong as in other decks that I've shown, so, as other sideboard options I've shown in other color combinations. But it's there for you. Gravdigger's Cage is really my my go-to. It's my if I'm really not sure about anything else, Gravdigger's Cage is what I go for because it basically blanks most of the strategies that you're going to see. Cards, creature cards, and graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield, and players can't cast spells from a graveyard or a library. And that doesn't just hit on graveyards, it hits on library too. So Collected Company, for example, would not work with Graftigger's Cage. It's an awesome card that shuts down a lot of different types of decks. And, you know, again, if you're not sure, if you really don't want to make the decision here, just go with Graftigger's Cage, put three of them in your sideboard, and you're fine. Relic of Progenitus. Yeah, I mean, target player exiles a card from his or her graveyard. You're essentially playing the slow game against your opponent. You're making them suffer, making them choose when you know what cards to remove every time you can tap Rel relic of progenitus and at any given time if you decide that you know enough is enough you pay one exile it and you exile all cards from all graveyards and that includes yours and you draw a card so there's a bit of a cantrip ability there again i think this comes down more to play style than anything else i would much just i would much rather have gravedigger's cage but if you need something to actually remove cards from the graveyard not just shut them down in the graveyard then relic of progenitus obviously is your better option Soul Guide Lantern is kind of an evolution of Relic of Progenitus. There's just more options on it. So when it enters the battlefield, you exile a card from a graveyard. You can tap it, sacrifice it, exile each of one's graveyards. Or you can pay one, sacrifice it, and draw a card. So kind of like in Wilt, if you if you draw too many of it, you can get rid of it and draw and get and get replace it essentially for a certain mana cost. Soul Guide Lantern is giving you that option. So again, pretty cool. Come, you know, a lot of people are a lot of players are choosing to play it now on their sideboards probably comes out more to the play style than anything else all right creature hate well you're playing red and green but mostly red in this case and you have a lot of options here most of the removal in this in this part of the pie is in red so engineer explosives not red card but it's a nice sweeper I've talked about it many times. A bit less effective in a Gruul deck or any two-color deck because you're stuck to two colors. So you're not only going to be able to target permanents that are two mana or less, but Engineering Explosives comes in really handy against token decks. Uh, and there are a lot of those kind of floating around right now, especially those uh, artifact decks that are producing a bunch of Thopter tokens and stuff like that. So Engineering Explosives might come in handy there for you, meta-dependent. This is essentially going to be in every sideboard tech video I 
I post up. If you've seen the previous ones, then you've heard me say the same thing. Flame Slash, believe it or not, does see some sideboard play. Unless you're playing Timber Delver, then it's seeing main board play. It deals four damage to target creature. It works. It really depends on the type of creatures you're expecting to see, but it's a sorcery speed, one, one red mana, deal four damage. That's pretty good in certain scenarios, so it's an option for you if you need some kind of single target removal to shore up whatever single target removal you already have in your main. Pyroclasm, you know, just a sweeper. It's a sweeper you're going to get in red. Deal two damage to each creature. All creatures might be pretty good for you. Depends on what you're expecting to play against. It'll definitely stop aggro in its tracks, but you're probably also playing aggro, so it might hurt you a lot as well. Keep that in mind. Anger of the Gods is even better for one extra red mana. Uh, compared to Pyroclasm, you're dealing three damage to each creature, and they also get exiled as opposed to getting going into the graveyard if they die this turn. Uh, so that's brutal. If you're playing against Dredge, or as I like to call it, not magic, that's going to be essentially game over for them because they don't get to bring those creatures back. You know from the graveyard like they normally would so if you're playing a lot of dredge or playing a lot of i don't know graveyard resurrection decks or you're just playing a lot of aggro decks and you want to be able to kill larger creatures anger of the gods might be a pretty good option for you but just keep in mind it also hits yours this member i mean let's all admit that phyrexian mana was kind of a mistake in modern but as long as for this member is legal it's always going to be an option for you no matter what color you're playing you know, for four life and one CMC to do, to do minus five, minus five to a creature might be very much worth it. You know, that that four life one time will save you a lot of life in the future with that creature not existing anymore. And this will kill most creatures in modern. Claim the Firstborn. This was actually shown to me in a previous video by one of my viewers. Thank you very much. I like it, so I wanted to include it here. You don't have blue, access to blue and gruel, so I couldn't show you Entrancing Melody, for example, which was in my other sideboard tech videos. This kind of replaces it. Temporarily, you gain control of a creature with converted mana cost three or less, which is many creatures in modern. Untap the grab creature gains haste until end of turn. So essentially, you're taking a creature for one turn, and I'm hoping that you're attacking with it because you kind of have to. And uh, yeah, simple as that for one CMC, uh, one red. So think about it. I think it's kind of cute. I think it can work. Uh, it really depends what you're playing against. If you want to be able to have some sort of control of your opponent's creatures, I mean, you could take a Death Shadow, by the way. You can steal a Death Shadow there. And uh, yeah, just swing in with a 18-18 and kill your opponent. Fire Spout, kind of like Anger to Gods, in the sense that it's dealing 3 damage to each creature. But depending on which mana you pay, it's dealing it to creatures with flying or without flying. You do both if you use red and green. This is not an, a may. You, it's, you have to. Uh, I mean, if you read the wording, it says, if it was spent, you do that damage. It's not, you can choose to. So be careful here. If you bring this in because you have a bunch of flyers in Gruul, I guess, so it's possible, and you don't want to hit the flyers with your with your sweepers, you just want to hit the ground creatures, well, you better make sure that you're only paying green. Um, sorry, you're only playing red, because if you pay green anywhere in the 3 CMC, you're, you're going to be hitting your flyers as well. So anyway, fire spells an option. Keep in mind, but might not be too relevant in rule. Cosalex Return still sees play, believe it or not. It's colorless, so, you know, it wouldn't be... I mean, you're going to get around protection here. If you're worried about protection, that's often when Cosalex Return was played because it deals two damage to each creature and is causing colorless damage. So it's going to kill your core firewalkers or whatever else that might be providing protection of a certain color to a creature or all your creatures. So might be handy, again. If that's the type of decks you're playing often, because X returns a good option there. Last but not least, Magmatic Sinkhole. For no life, just cards out of your graveyard, you're going to deal 5 damage to a creature or Planeswalker. Pretty good here, in many ways it's better than this, this member, although it's dealing damage, it's not doing minus 5, minus 5, there's a big difference there. But, most of the time, Magmatic Sinkhole will be just fine dealing 5 damage to a creature, and it also targets Planeswalkers. So, again, something to consider. If you're playing a lot of Planeswalkers, might be worth a shot to have one of these in your sideboard. All right, aggro burn mid range is kind of just the mix of everything. This is mostly life gain here, to be honest. Life goes on, you gain four life. If a creature died this turn, you gain eight life instead. Almost certainly your go-to life gain card. I don't know why it doesn't see more play. I, I've I've played this in a lot of my decks, and I don't see it often. But I, I, if you're looking for a card in your sideboard that gains you life consistently with very with a very easy condition, life goes on is pretty awesome. It's any creature that dies, not just your creature, not just your opponent's creature, any creature that dies, 
you gain eight life instead. Eight life is pretty big. It's a guaranteed eight. Yeah, I, I would go for life goes on in almost every instance. Shadow Spear is pretty awesome if you're playing a lot of creatures. Plus one, plus one, trample and lifelink is just brutal. Brutal. Uh, you probably have trample in red and, and red and green, but you don't probably don't have lifelink that easily. And lifelink is going to be pretty important, if you're, especially if you're playing big creatures. Well, lifelink on a 4-5 or 5-6 Tarmogoyf, eh, it's going to feel pretty good. Weather to Storm, I personally do not like Weather to Storm because of Storm. Uh, you gain 3 life, and yeah, in Magical Christmas Land, you could gain 9, 12, 15 life out of this. Realistically, you're going to have it in your hand, you're going to wait until the right time to cast it, and you might have to hold up 2 mana for a long time, and you're probably end up going to casting it for like 3 life or 6 life at the most. Kind of sucks. You can be casting Life Goes On for 1 and gaining 8, or you can be casting Weather to Storm for 2 and gaining 6. It's not 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 my type of thing i don't know why it was it saw so much play honestly i think it was just waiting for life goes on to be printed feed the clan if you're playing big creatures that are always big always gonna have power four or greater feed the clan is gonna be better than life goes on you're getting 10 life overall so two more is two more that makes that's important you probably have the two mana to pay for it and again if you're always playing big creatures feed the clan's gonna be better so go go for feed the clan pulse of marassa yeah, it's an option here. For 3 mana, you're going to gain 6 life no matter what, and you're returning a creature or a land card from your graveyard to, to your hand, essentially. That's pretty important. I mean, that could be pretty good. If you're worried about losing certain creatures, you want to bring able to bring creatures back, maybe you're in a removal-heavy meta or, you know, permission-heavy meta, Pulse of Marassa would be a pretty good option there, and you're gaining 6 life, which is pretty good. The last two cards, Ops and Bailoth and Huntmaster Defels, not necessarily there for life gain although they do gain you life they're there more for the mid-range games in my opinion and believe it or not aggro aggro games as well but mostly mid-range games opposite and bailoth you're mostly paying it for its second ability which is if you have to discard a card you can choose opposite and bailoth and then put onto the battlefield instead so you know it kind of makes your opponent's liliana feel stupid when it tells you to discard a card well you don't have to you could just target opposite and bailoth from your hand and put it onto the battlefield which is pretty awesome doesn't see as much play anymore but it's definitely it's definitely something that you can play and they gain four life at the same time which is pretty powerful and it's a four four so that's a big body how master of is my favorite not enough people play with how master of i know i i feel like i'm converting some of you so that much i know for sure it's an awesome card take a look at it i don't put the flip side of flip cards in any of my videos maybe i should go take a look at how master of and what happens when it flips but you know, if you play Huntmaster Defels and it sticks to the battlefield, your opponent doesn't have anything to do, can't do anything with it, you've won the game. I've posted up many videos already, just in the past month or two, of showing you how when Huntmaster hits the battlefield, my opponent within two turns concedes. It's just what happens. Sometimes it's an instant concede, sometimes it takes a couple of turns. But I think the average has been about two turns. And when it doesn't die, or my opponent doesn't care about it, it's because they were winning anyway, and Huntmaster Defels wasn't going to be enough to do it. But generally speaking, Huntmaster Defels ends games. People don't believe me. It's it's awesome. It's just awesome. You're playing red-green. You're probably ramping, so four mana is going to be a joke for you. Uh, admittedly, Huntmaster Defels does play better when you're playing Teamer. Because you could play around with your opponents a bit more with permission and and cantripping and stuff like that, but I think you're just fine in a deck like in a two color deck like Gruel, Huntmaster Defels. I love it. Play it. Trust me. Last but not least, control and combo hate. Well, you know what? It was all rosy up to now. Realistically speaking, you don't have much when you're playing against combo and control. You have Veil of Summer for control, and uh, you know that's great. It's basically your only protection. You have no counter spells. You have no blue and gruel, unfortunately. So your only line of attack is really to hurt your opponent's lands. So if you're playing a uh, control deck, boil is going to be important because you're going to be destroying all islands. You're not playing islands, so you don't care. For four mana, which you can probably get to pretty quickly, you know, if the coast is clear, or maybe you have access to five mana, so you have Villa Summer to kind of back you up, destroy all islands, you're probably winning that game. So... Boil, pretty good option if you're playing against control. Not so much for combo, though, so just be careful there. Defense grid, uh, again, good against control. An old card, doesn't see that much play. 
but it's an option for you when you're playing in Gruul and you're worried about playing against a lot of combo decks or particularly control decks. It's essentially going to make your opponent's spells cost a lot more during your turn. So, you know, if they want to play Cryptic Command, they need to have 5 mana. Uh, sorry, they need to have 7 mana. Um, you know, a lot harder for control to deal with that. You know, mana leak cost 5. You know, they're essentially leaking themselves, mana leaking themselves for every spell that they cast on your turn. It also affects you though, so be careful. But generally speaking, against the decks you're bringing it against, you're not too worried about their turn, you're worried about your turn. So Defense Grid is an option, Boil is an option, Veil of Summer is an option. You don't have much against combo. Generally speaking, if you're playing against a combo deck, you're going to have to be targeting their lands. It's the best thing you can do. Odds are, combo decks are gonna, the combo deck you're playing against is going to be leaning heavy on the lands anyway. Maybe it's very greedy on lands. So, you know, you play a Blood Moon, or you play destructive land spells, or, you know, I mean, Veil of Summer is not going to do much. It's a very, Veil of Summer is a very defensive spell. But you're going to have to be looking at your land destruction spells for stuff like that against combo. But for control, you have these three cards. I think it's good enough. I would stick to Veil of Summer most of the time. And that's it for Gruul. I'm finally done with this part of the color pie. I can't wait to move on to Saltai and Jund, uh, Abzan, all the black-related Co you know color combinations that's going to be fun so stay tuned for that i don't know if that's coming next week or the week after i'll take a look at my schedule uh, but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you thought about it what i missed uh you know what i didn't miss uh, i'd love to hear from you if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up if you enjoy my content in general please subscribe hit notification bell follow me on twitter facebook wherever whatever you prefer i keep everything up to date and you know if you're interested in all my new videos or giveaways whatever it may be those are the place, best places to find out and of course this channel so subscribe a big thank you to all my patrons my patreon is slowly growing that's awesome thank you for the early support you have no idea how much it means to me uh, for supporting the channel and at the same time i've made the tiers uh, pretty interesting, I think, because uh, essentially you're giving something to me and I'm giving something to you back every year. And for some of you, you're going to be even luckier and you'll be getting all of your patron money back, essentially, because I'm going to be sending Mythics and Rares to all of my patrons at the end of every year, kind of like a patron giveaway, but everyone wins. And within all of those Mythic and Rares that you get, a certain few of you will be randomly getting, a, you know, a bigger, you know, a, lar a, a more expensive Rare or Mythic randomly. So check out the tiers. I think it's pretty cool. You help me. I help you. That's what I like about this community. Thanks, and have a good one.